Hi, my name is Imran Huck, and welcome to another episode of The Voice of a Leader, the series where I interview high achieving leaders and try and find out how they got to where they are. The world of politics can be a hectic place. There are many perks, such as reaching a certain status and having various networking opportunities. At the same time, there are many challenges, one of which you can be randomly harassed by random people. This week, I caught up with Calvin Thompson, who's a current federal member of parliament for the area of Wills. Calvin, welcome to The Voice of a Leader. You were a very, very ambitious young kid. I think when you were age 11, you started the Pascoval Young Naturalists with your younger brother. At that time, and probably these days, most young kids I know are either playing outside, video games, or if they're really, really bored, they're just eating. <laughs> How did you grow the desire for animals and the environment? Um, I didn't think of myself at the time as being ambitious, but uh, uh, when I was young, uh, I and, and one of my brothers got uh, very interested in Australian birds and plants and animals and uh, we started up a thing which we called the club at first and yep. then uh, later the more grandly named Pasco Vale Young Naturalists. Um, we ended up spending a fair bit of time persuading people that it wasn't about taking our clothes <laughs> off. Uh, but we uh, went on e excursions and trips to areas uh, outside Melbourne to, to look at uh, birds and plants and animals. We we grew a lot of um, native plants from seed and, and by cutting and so on and uh, encouraged our neighbours and residents in Pasco Vale and the surrounding suburbs to plant Australian native yep. plants in their own backyards to encourage native wildlife uh, back into the suburbs. Uh, and we got interested in conservation and environment issues and, and that's the thing that, that made me political. Um, my, my brother uh, took his interest into the area of plant genetics and so on. He did a PhD in forestry oh, and he, he um, discovered a, an acacia out in Australia, in Central Australia which had never been found before. So there's an acacia Thompson eye oh, out, nice. out, out there, but, but, but I got political. I, yeah. I, I learned that there were these conservation and environment um, disputes and issues and I discovered that Australia's birds and plants and animals were under considerable threats and pressures and that many species were declining, some had, had reached the brink of extinction. So I, I was interested in those issues and I discovered that it was governments and the political process that for better or for worse determined the outcomes. So that sent me in a political direction. Good. So speaking of political direction, so in 1974 you joined the Australian Labor Party and in 1996 you were elected to the federal parliament as a member of Wills and you've been elected to it, is it seven times? Re yes. Oh, so you're doing a, very, a lot of things right obviously. Yes. So as you and many people would know it's being a politician is quite a stressful role especially during election times. So can you tell me about one particular experience where it was a very very bad experience and how did you overcome it? Well I, I, um, uh, I had the good fortune to uh, uh, in joining the Labor Party to get myself involved in local issues and, and support um, the Labor Party at a campaign level. Yep. I, got, uh, I got involved in it organisationally and also in terms of its policy development uh, and as a result I was given uh, opportunities to represent it at the, at the council yep. uh, level. I was a, a councillor from 1981 to 1988 uh, in the State Parliament from 1988 to 1996 uh, and then in the, the federal parliament from 1996 uh, through to the present. So yep. uh, I'm coming up for, for 20 years, oh, con wow. con continuous uh, uh, representation. Uh, I suppose the, the uh, biggest career blow I experienced was um, uh, uh, resigning from the, the front bench in uh, 2007 um, uh, when I'd been shadow attorney general uh, at that time. and. Um, uh, the circumstances leading up to that were a great surprise and shock to um, to me, and and it was very uh, difficult. But um, local people were very supportive of me, and they they um, uh, understood my my character and sure. my and my values and the, the the work that I'd been doing in the local area, and and so um, 
Later on in 2007, I was uh, re-elected uh, with a very handsome majority. Uh, in, in fact, Wills has been one of the strongest Labor uh, seats in the country during the, the period that I've been the, the representative of it. Uh, and I think from, from there, uh, as a backbencher, one of the opportunities you have as a backbencher is to uh, speak your mind and to talk about the issues that are of concern to you. And I think that uh, being a Member of Parliament does bring with it great opportunities to do that and you, you sell yourself short and you sell your electorate short uh, if you don't talk about what you think and what you believe in and give people the benefit of your experience and the things that you've learned over the years. And, and, and I thought, you know, we, we all make mistakes but we all need to learn from our mistakes and I, uh, and I have sought over the years to learn from mine and, and as a, uh, a backbencher post 2007 uh, I was very clear about issues where I thought Australia wasn't going in the right sure. direction and where, where I thought we could do better and was quite willing and prepared to speak out about those issues and uh, I think that's um, th that's served me well. I, it's, it, as I said, I think you, you're wasting the mm. opportunity you're given as a member of parliament if you simply you know toe the party line all, yeah. all the time and and uh, do what other people want you to do. I think you've got to um, uh, be genuine about things that uh, you personally sincerely believe in. Excellent. I'm sure you paid close attention to the Paris Climate uh, Summit, which was held in 2015. And there were many agreements reached, and one of which was that developed and developing countries will be required to cut their emissions by up to two degrees Celsius. Did you agree with most, if not all, the agreements? Um, I think it was a very useful conference, and very significant steps forward were made. Uh, the science suggests that um, we need to contain the level of temperature rise to uh, two degrees, yep. indeed less than two degrees, because beyond that the impacts on our weather patterns are uh, unforeseeable mm. or, or unpredictable. And so scientists are saying that Australia is at risk of um, more bushfires, more droughts, more cyclones, more floods, more extreme weather events. and so. We need to do what we can mm. to prevent that from happening. And the fact that countries right around the world were prepared to em embrace that as a target and to personally put forward uh, what they are going to contribute to keep global temperatures below that, that degree of rise was very encouraging for me. Now, of course, it's one thing for countries to say they're going to do yeah. it and another thing to see it uh, in, in action and we all want to see it in action. We know there has to be a, a transition to renewable energy away from the, the fossil fuels and yep. uh, we know there has to be action in relation to land clearing and the like which generates very considerable emissions. So uh, there's a lot that needs to be done but I, I'm encouraged that countries were as committed as they were at, at Paris and also there's a lot going on on the technology front. You see the um, uh, electric vehicles and the battery storage for solar power and so on. So I, I'm very positive about, about our prospects. Good. So you're currently in the process of uh, retiring after a long successful career. What's some piece of advice you'd give someone who's keen to say fill your shoes and become a federal member of parliament in the House of Representatives? Uh, I had a teacher when I was in, in secondary school who uh, uh, who was a migrant to Australia, he said, you know, Australia is a fantastic country, he said, but um, uh, when, when they're looking for volunteers around here uh, and everyone's standing in a line, yeah. they all take a step backwards. He said, if you want to get on in this country, all you have to do is not take that step backwards, just be prepared to, to sure. do it. So when, when I joined the Labor Party, when they were uh, looking for people to help out during the campaigns, uh, people to help out on, on policy committees, people to be involved in the, the administrative work of the Labor Party and so on, uh, I volunteered. I was, I was happy to, yep. to do it and, and enjoyed doing it. And in doing that, I, I was able to get a political base of support so that when 
opportunities did arise that in the state parliament, the electorate of Pasco Vale, you know, one, one day it wasn't there and then mm. the next day the electoral commissioners drew one yep. uh, and then the, the electorate of wills. Um, I was in a position because I had local political support to to get endorsement and, and to represent the, the Labor Party in that way. So uh, I think the, the first thing I'd say is you've got to you know, you've got to be prepared to to volunteer yeah, and not, sure. not, not take that step back and be prepared to, to do the work and, and put in the hours. Um, the other thing I think is you need to be able to listen to people and understand what their their views and and uh, beliefs and concerns and values and priorities are. I, you know, sometimes uh, when you get to Canberra there are people who uh, uh, dismiss public opinion and they talk about populist and, and whatever. But I, I don't I don't regard populist as a term of abuse. I, I think <laughs> that um, as as elected representatives, uh, it, we do have an obligation to to represent our yeah. our communities and and to be interested in in what's of concern to them. And I've I've always tried to do that. I've, I've tried to uh, get around the electorate to be accessible. Uh, as someone who was born and grew up and still lives in the electorate, uh, and and to take seriously the things that that people tell me and and the things that are priorities for people around here. Very good. As I mentioned before, it can be quite a stressful role being a politician. So since you'll be retiring very soon, are you just going to relax now, <laughs> take a holiday around the world, or what's your, what's, do you have any plans? Uh, well, in, in the immediate future, once once the, the federal election is, is held, uh, I probably won't do much for a while. I've, I've not had a, a, a break of any consequence um, uh, from the time I left university oh, and joined the yeah. workforce, but uh, uh, so I do uh, intend to take a bit of a break and, and, and do a bit of travelling. But um, I, I don't intend to retire from life. I've, <laughs> I've said to people, yeah, you yeah. know, there are there are lots of issues that are near and dear to me about which I have strong views, and so I do intend to uh, continue to be involved in in relation to public policy and in relation to issues which I believe are important for Australia's future. One of the things that uh, I think is that we have an obligation to pass on a world to our children and to yeah. our grandchildren in as good a condition as the one that our parents and our grandparents gave to us. And uh, in many respects, I don't think we're discharging this obligation as well as we should. I think that, you know, for a lot of young people, uh, I, I look at my own children and their, their generation mm. and others, and I don't think they have the, the same sort of opportunities if you're talking about employment or education yeah. or the state of the, the environment, things like housing affordability yeah, and so on. They don't have the same uh, opportunities that I and my generation had. So, you know, where, where I think we're going wrong, I will continue to be you know, speaking out and expressing my views. Excellent. Well, Colin, thanks again for uh, taking some time out of your day. You join me in the show and hope you have a smooth transition to retirement. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that, Imran. Good to talk with you. Thank you for watching another episode. It was quite interesting to note from Calvin that as a politician, there are some of those out there who are not doing their jobs properly because they they're trying to reflect what is popular, not what people really actually think. Once again, thank you for watching this episode. Remember, if you or someone you know is a high achieving leader and would like to have an interview with me please visit my website, answer three questions, and send an email to thevoiceoverleader at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page so you're kept up to date with this series. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.